I'd like to end Guantanamo. I'd like it to be over with. We would like to end uh, the Guantanamo. We'd like it to be empty. As president, I will close Guantanamo. And I understand it, uh, Gitmo has created controversies. It needs to be closed. I will not relent in my determination to shut it down. It is not who we are. It's time to close Gitmo. Over the course of nearly a decade, two U.S. presidents have talked about closing it. But the razor wire world of orange jumpsuits and legal limbo remains a monument to the fear and fury of the war on terror created during the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan. One towel is for washing and drying. The other towel is to be used as their prayer mat. Major General Michael Leonard was tasked with setting up Gitmo and ran it for the first 90 days. They get a jumpsuit, they don't get to pick the color. Now he owns a cherry farm in rural Michigan. Even back in 2002, he suspected the temporary facility would be anything but. I knew that it was going to be extraordinarily more difficult to close it down than it was to open it. These iconic images of the first arrivals to Gitmo were captured on his orders. They, they had sensory deprivation. They arrived seriously dehydrated. Uh, they'd been put in a kneeling position. Most of them were not able to stand. We didn't know what we had yet. we have been told that these were the worst of the worst. As concerns grew about detainee treatment, the world was told the same thing. The detainees are not choir boys. They are believed to be determined killers. These people are terrorists. They're terrorists. That's the only thing I can say, they're terrorists. In fact, many were likely innocent of any crime, swept off the Afghan battlefield and handed over to U.S. forces in exchange for bounties. They almost all had about the same story. They were either had gone to Afghanistan to find a wife or that they had been studying in a madrasa. Now, some of them, uh, without a doubt, uh, were telling the truth, uh, but others were indeed were uh, very bad people. The problem I had is, is that I had no way of telling the difference. What's taking place down there is responsible, it's humane, it's legal, it's proper, it's consistent with the Geneva Conventions, and after a period, that will sink in. Instead, in the years that followed, reports of abuse and torture multiplied, all denied by the White House. Now, the FBI's accounts of people who are locked up, naked, shackled to cold floors for so long that they've urinated and defecated on themselves. It tortures us into a confession. They've been hung by their wrists and beaten. They've been hung by their ankles and beaten. They've been subjected to electric shock. In the end, many of the so-called terrorists at Gitmo were sent away. 779 people have been held there. Now, only 122 remain. Closing Gitmo will mean dealing with them, and that won't be easy. 32 have been convicted or marked for prosecution. 56 have been cleared for release, but the government isn't sure about where they'll go. And 34 are so-called indefinite detainees, considered too dangerous to let go, but based on evidence that's either too weak or tainted to actually prosecute. It sets up, in my mind, a, a level of cognitive dissonance because if we don't if we don't have the evidence, how do we make the determination that they're indefinite detainees? Meanwhile, Republicans in Congress have moved to block any attempt to transfer detainees from Gitmo. We should be sending more terrorists there for further interrogation to keep this country safe. As far as I'm concerned, every last one of them can rot in hell. But as long as they don't do that, then they can rot in Guantanamo Bay. But for the soldier who built Gitmo, American values are trapped there too. We have uh, we made the decisions we did when we were angry, and uh, we were afraid. And uh, those are not the times to make long-term decisions. Uh, I think that, uh, that history is not going to be as kind. And for Leonard, if there's a risk that comes with setting those values free, it should be met on the battlefield. My view is, is that the Constitution is the Constitution, and if we cannot le legally lock someone up without bending that incredible document, then it's going to be necessary to release them. Our, our U.S. military and our allies' militaries are good enough that if we release somebody and they decide to go back, back to the fight, we'll find them and we'll kill them.